Hello and welcome to Fibertown in my kitchen today. Um, stop in and catch up with the best. You'll relish the flavor. So welcome to Funky, I mean Fibertown. I'm Emily, Chain of Fools on Ravelry. My blog where you can find this podcast is uh, Fibertown, F-I-B-R-E, town.blogspot.com. I'm also on YouTube. And yay, join the Ravelry group. A lot of people have. Um, let me tell you who's new this week. I think we're up to 60-something. I have uh, Tina from Pennsylvania, Susan uh, and Holly, who are both from Virginia. And Holly is the host of the Sheepish, she, Sheepish, Sheepish Podcast, who gave me a shout-out. Thank you, Holly. I love your podcast, too. I have Yvonne from Sweden, Karen from North Carolina, Belle from Washington, from Canada, the Great White North, I have Marianne and Bernadette. Uh, Mary and Diana from Ohio. From the UK, there's Sandra and Sam, who also has a podcast. Um, she is Stealth Dragon, and she's the Knit Run Dig. I love the archaeology stuff. Yay. Randy from Indiana. Hello. From Wisconsin, Natalie. From Michigan, Molly O'Malley. And Anakin from Norway. Brenda from Tennessee, from California, there's Brenda and Cindy, hello, and Christina from Concord, I guess that's Massachusetts, not sure. Um, so yes, so hello and welcome, I'm glad to be here, it's a beautiful day, the sun is shining, Alice is running around in the kitchen, she might make some noise here. This is her new favorite toy, I don't, it's, I don't know if it's a hickory, we call them spiky balls technical term. She likes to roll on them, throw them around, um, throw them up in the air and catch them, uh, just generally cavort with them outside. And she just brought this one in. She's a bad girl. That's her spiky ball. Sometimes she eats them and then I have to stop her because you don't want to have spikes in your tummy. I also wanted to say thank you to Emily from What Just Watchin' for the shout out. Yay. A lot of people have found me through uh, her podcast. So thank you so much. Um, all right, let's get right into show and tell. I have two finished objects. Let me show you the oinker first. Here's the piggy. A cute little curly tail. This was from the um, Mochi Mochi book. This was pigs with wigs. And uh, my son's been sleeping with it, so it's a little bit smushed on side from so one side to the other. Oh my goodness. Got little beady little pig eyes and this adorable tail, so he's very happy with it. And my second finished object is my gigantor cowl of pinkness and sparkliness. I knit on this just, let's see, my own sort of design. I cast on 150 stitches. Garter, 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 garter. Seamed them up the short side. You can see right here, there's a seam. And it makes a lovely, very squishy. Look at the look at the stretch on that. Very stretchy cowl. Excellent. And my chair is making noise, which is going to bother everybody. So, all right, let's see if I can adjust things without knocking over my loom. This is just so cozy and nice. So those are my two FOs. Um, and I do have some whips to show you as well. Here is my hand spun sock. I've done the heel flap. I think that's where I was last week on the heel flap. This is out of the Pigeon Roof Studios three ply Polworth in the Verdigris colorway. And I'm using my um, Carbons needles. These are 2.5 millimeters, US one and a half. They're lovely. So there's my heel turn. I love a heel flap. And there's my turn, and I'm doing the gusset. And my sort of sock recipe is I love to do the, not a gusset right here, which is where you usually get your SSKs and knit two togethers on the side, coming down the, I believe, the instep. I love to do a heel gusset. And that is something I learned from the Breaking Hearts pattern. Um, I don't remember the, the author of that one. Turtle, Pearl Girl, something like that. I'll put it in the show notes. But she does the gusset on the bottom of the sock. Let me show you on this one. 
I don't think I talked about this before, but maybe I did. Take a look. Oh, I think I did talk about this before. There's my finished one. And instead of the decreases being here, they're on the heel. And it just really hugs your foot nicely. So I'm on to the foot soon. Just knit, knit, knit. It'll be done hopefully in a week or two. It's kind of been by the wayside because I've been finishing things and spinning things and weaving things. So it's kind of become my car knitting. All right, I have cast on finally for the Lucy hat. And the Lucy hat might be full of fail. We will see. I decided to just keep going with it just, just to see. I don't think it's, it feels big, but I don't think it's the type of hat that needs to have negative ease and hug your head. So the yarn is nice. If I have to knit again with it, rip this out and knit it again, I won't be too sad. All right, so here is the Lucy hat. Uh, Madeline Tosh Vintage is the purple in Flash Dance. And this hat band, which is the woven stitch, that was fun, is just uh, a, a gray, very loosely plied Italian merino. I'm not sure of the brand. It lost its uh, ball band long, long ago. I do remember it was Italian, though. So, All right, so there is the fold-up part. And it's just very dense. The garter stitch here is heavy and thick. It looks huge, doesn't it? I'm not even going to try it on because it'll just look crazy. But we'll see. It's fun knitting, as I said, and I've been knitting it. It's a fast knit, but I wanted to slow down on it so I could show you my progress and my stitch markers. I have, these are from Knit Cubby. My Downton Abbey stitch markers. I have the Dowager Countess. She is the beginning of the row. Knit Cubby is an Etsy shop. Uh, let's see. Daisy and Miss Patmore. There. They are. I have the girls. The, the Grantham ladies. Bates and Anna. Oh, will they ever, ever be together again? Yep, back to the Dowager Countess. So, the Lucy hat. If it works, I'll show you next week. All right, so I did talk, I've been talking about the burdock cardigan. And this is what it looks like. And I've been telling you all it's from the knit scene. It's not. It's from November Knits, the book, but it's from Interweave, this one. I don't know why I said knit scene. Um, I have done, I've cast on yesterday. I've cast on out of Malabrigo Rios in the cocoa colorway. It's a beautiful brown. And uh, it calls for provisional cast on, so the white yarn is my provisional cast on. I used a Lucy Neatby YouTube video to do a crochet provisional cast on. It was a different crochet provisional cast on from the one I've, I've done in the past where you just do a chain, 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 and then you go through the you, you pick up and knit through the back bump of the crochet chain, then unzip it. But I'm trying something different. Hopefully it'll work. Um, yeah, so really not much going on here. I'm using my Chowgu interchangeables. I have the small set. Um, still getting used to these. I love me some Chowgus. But I've had issues with, with things coming on. Um, see, they, they twist in. See that right there? I've had issues with them coming untwisted and they come with a key to tighten them up and I think I've been using it wrong. I think I'm, I'm getting better results now so hopefully I won't have those untwisting issues anymore. One thing I do love about them is this hole. See that hole right there? If you are knitting lace or anything where you want to put in a lifeline, you can just put your waist yarn that you're going to, your lifeline yarn basically, dental floss, whatever you're going to use, uh, embroidery thread, and you put it through this hole and as you knit the row, you knit the row um, where you want your lifeline to be, it just takes that lifeline yarn with the knitting. So that's great. I think Knit Picks has that as well, but I'm, I'm going to have to try that with some my next lace project. So that's the burdock cardigan. Um, 
That's the hem part. There's a provisional cast on because there's a hem. So, yeah, those are my whips, my active ones. Uh, next, I want to show you my spinning. I did go ahead and finish my <clears throat> eight ounces of Color Me Different. Um, not my favorite, but it's it was interesting. And it's not not my colors, but it's it's growing on me. It's got blues and oranges and reds and, of course, that lime green. That was the Misty Mountain Merino in Limeade. And the other color is um, Fractious Fibers BFL Silk in Chipotle. So I've got... They smell good. I don't know what they're going to become. Going in the hand-spun stash. My other spinning is the Jacob I showed you last week. It was five ounces of Jacob, gray Jacob. And I spun that woolen and I did um, three singles, and I did those on my largest whorl, on my ladybug. I have a ladybug named Fiona, and I applied them all together on the second largest whorl, a little bit smaller when you're doing woolen plying, or woolen spinning. I think it's the plying that gives the wool its um, more of a structure. So you do a, you ply on a smaller whorl. Alice, go lay down. Sorry. So here it is. It's about 200 yards of a three-ply worsted. It's got different sizes in it. It's worsted maybe in some places, Aaron and others. There's a fatter spot. I think this is going to be perfect for the Winds Chief. Um, nice, nice solid color to show off the twisted stitches. And if I have leftovers, fingerless gloves. I think my husband needs some fingerless gloves. All right, um, next up for spinning. <sighs> I need me some color after that gray. So take a look. This I've been hoarding since Maryland Sheep and Wool last year. It's Into the World Vegetable Medley Polworth Silk Carded Bat. How fun is that? Now, I'm going to go back to, uh, I had another craftsy class, um, Spinning with Colored Fibers by Felicia Lowe, who is the owner of Sweet Georgia Yarns. And she has a lot of ideas in that class for, um, for taking bats apart and just manipulating color and spinning in different ways. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this one, but I just can't get over I mean, the work that goes into making a bat like this, it's worth it. So that is on my radar for spinning. Not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but we'll see. Um, okay, so I do have something on my loom. Pardon me while I bend over. This is my loom of unknown origin. It works for me. Rigid heddle. And, oh dear, that's not good. All right, well, I've got a whoopsie in here. This is, that rainbow is my header. This is the um, Blue Ridge Fibers Footprints. The warp right here is the darker. And this is the variegated. It's called Apple Rose. I think I called it Apple Bloom, Apple Blossom. It's Apple Rose. So after it's woven, this will come out, and I'll I'll, fringe, I'll take care of fringing it. And, uh, yeah, I might have to undo some of that. See that? Live and learn. I shouldn't have moved my loom, maybe. So this is what the yarn looks like on the shuttle. And this loom was a gift to me from my good friend Angie. Mistress of all things fibery. She weaves baskets and stuff. It's awesome. All right, this is going flat so it doesn't mess up my weaving anymore. So yeah, all right, up and coming. I do have some things rolling around in my head. I told you about the Winds Chief and the Fingerless Mitts. And these aren't coming anytime soon, but I just wanted to show you all because I think they're amazing. This one is a crochet project called The Blooming Flower Cushion by Lucy of Attic 24. How awesome.
awesome is that? I have some county effect garden in the rainbow. That would, be, that would be amazing. And there are lots of projects that do this. It's just a cushion. I think it would be an awesome thing for a little girl or me for my knitting rocking chair. Um, also, I have been loving pictures of this, uh, especially out of some hand spun. This is the Dream Bird by Nadita Swings. Take a look. It's it's like a combination of a wingspan and a lefty. How beautiful is that? Let me show you this one. Look. Loveliness. It's like a dragon. So I don't know if that will be anytime soon, but I just thought those two things were beautiful. I wanted to share. I got a book in the mail. Um, had an Amazon gift card, and this was only about $12. 60 Quick Baby Knits. Not for me. There are about four or five babies in my circle of friends that are being born um, this spring, summer. And two of the babies are being born to knitting friends. So I need to get something really awesome. Nobody's finding out what they're having, so. And I'm thinking they're summer babies. So they don't really need anything knitted right away. So I might wait till they're they're born um, and then decide what to knit. But one of my friends is having twins. So I said, I need this baby book. I'm going to show you three patterns, just three, that I think are adorable. There are lots that are adorable, but here are three. Flower Stitch Baby Booties. Love that. And the sheep hat. That is the front of it. Wait for it. Sheep butt on the back. Bah. So those are super cute. And then this one I have to knit. Love this one. Somebody better have a boy. The Fisherman Pullover. Look at that. It's like a little grandpa sweater. I love that one. It's like a fish, fish bone rib, uh, cable pattern. So that was 60 Quick Baby Knits. And this is from, I think, Cascade puts this out because all of the patterns use Cascade Worsted Superwash. So a lot of options for things there. I forgot to show you all a finished object. It's not knitted or crocheted or woven or spun, but it, my daughter got together with some friends and they made fleece tie blankets um, for the Snuggle Project for our animal shelter. Here's one of them. Got wiener dogs on one side, and the other fleece is paw prints. And they made a lot, maybe about 10 of these. Um, really simple, you just cut strips, tie knots, tie both fabrics together. They've got a cute little blankie. I don't know if I can use those in the snuggle, um, the snuggle knit-alongs and so forth, but I might look into it. Okay, um, I have something to share with you about my Ravelry nerdiness and I hesitated because this shows a level of I won't say anal retentiveness but you know form your own conclusions so here's my Ravelry page <clears throat> and you see all those tabs up there I've tagged all my projects into different categories. I have over 200 projects. I hit that mark somewhere in around the holidays and here are my here are my categories. Kids, color work, crochet, doggy, felted, purple. My purple category is awesome. Noro, sweaters, holidays, home, malabrigo, lace, cables. So now what if I want to see my everything I've ever done that's purple. Here you go. Purple, purple, 
purple. Not anymore. Purple, purple. That's not enough purple. I need more. Anyway, I had some time to myself and that's how I spent it. It was fun though. I get to see everything I've done. Okay, so we're almost done. But I did want to share with you all a thought I had about uh, the group, which is great. Come and join it. Lots of amazing people in that group already. Um, super fun to meet you guys. I'm thinking that I'm going to have a monthly giveaway. A monthly finished objects thread. I love those. And that way people are sharing all the time what they're making and talking about it. So I'm going to start one for February. Share anything that you have made fiber related. Um, in there and I'll draw for a pattern up to the value of seven dollars uh, at the end of the month. That way we can all keep current on what everyone is doing and I love those prize giveaways on a monthly basis. All right so you can find me on YouTube, fibertown.blogspot.com, on Ravelry, the Fibertown podcast group. Come and join it. Say hi. And where else? I'm Chain of Fools on Ravelry and on Plurk. And thank you for visiting Funky Fibertown. And I will see you next time. Bye.